Uh, I'm presenting uh, in behalf of our uh, company, Earth, and in behalf of Eva Kars, who couldn't be here this morning. So I'm only the messenger, so don't shoot me. <laughs> in this session about the role of volunteers, we want to share with you the development that we see today in Dutch archaeology. We only speak from our own position and perspective on the commercial market of the contract archaeology. What we see is that public archaeology is a craze or a mania that is followed by everyone. In Dutch practice of contract archaeology, public archaeology is often synonymous with the deployment of volunteers in excavations, the washing of finds and the counting of shards. We think that this shows no respect for our profession and no respect for volunteers. We also see that archaeological companies in the Netherlands are focused on telling stories uh, instead of carrying out scientific research. The question is, of course, what is public archaeology? Our position is that public archaeology and involving the public in archaeological research is essential for our profession. Archaeology must at all times contribute to our society. Public archaeology must reflect social developments and help us to understand them. Public archaeology, however, has many different forms depending on the purpose, the audience and who executes it. For us, public archaeology is a completely different profession that must be carried out by professionals. The form should not be leading, but should be the result of a clear vision of what one wants to achieve. <coughs> public archaeology can be a nice part of a project, or a project in itself, if it is well executed. There is, however, a problem. In the Treaty of Valletta, Article 9 states that the public should be engaged in archaeological research. This should be done in order to develop public awareness of the value of archaeological heritage and to create access to it. Unfortunately, Article 9 has not been implemented in the Dutch legislation. So does this absolve us from engaging the public? Well, I think without legal obligation there is no money in commercial contract archaeology to engage the public. With no vision can be developed without money. And without vision and development, there is no professional public archaeology. The practice is therefore that public archaeology, and I'm speaking only about commercial contract archaeology projects, in the Netherlands is usually filled in by deploying volunteers as free labor and as winning tenders. But in this we differ completely from other academic disciplines. Do other disciplines let unskilled volunteers take over their work? Do they use volunteers so they can operate cheaper? Can you walk into a hospital and volunteer as a doctor or a dentist without a license? I think the answer is clear. In Dutch commercial practice, public archaeology is carried out in such a way that it often does not have the desired result. But how could this be possible as long as there is no money and therefore no vision or clear goals? So the solution to this problem is simple. We need money. Somebody needs to pay for public archaeology. The best way to tackle this problem is through the introduction of Article 9 from the Valletti Treaty. But what if this does not happen? How do we get money then? In our view, it is important that archaeology in a broad sense contributes to society. Social benefit should be the starting point of all we do as archaeologists. Our research should have both scientific and social value. If we approach archaeology as a social study that can contribute to current social issues, there might be some possibilities. In a recent archaeological survey conducted by us in the Netherlands, part of the tender was that 5% of the contract sum should be spent on something we call in the Netherlands social return on invest. In short, that means that we had to invest part of our revenue in a local population. Normally, this demand is met by hiring local long-term unemployed or deprived young people. But in our project, we have chosen to use this budget to contribute to social issues in a different way. We do this by making uh, a documentary about our uh, research. We tell people about the methods that we use and the relevance of archaeology for modern life. In the documentary, we show that archaeology is so much more than excavating. We show how we use different sciences to approach archaeological questions. And in addition, we try to enthuse young people about a profession. At the same time, the goal of the documentary is intended to establish a connection between the residents and the local past. 
to uh, give them what the English call a sense of place. So maybe this is the answer of commercial archaeology, to engage the public. <coughs> is the key of public archaeology social relevance and education? It is important to realize that we are depending on the public and that engaging the public is extremely important. But public archaeology is not only a craze and includes more than to let the volunteers play. We need Article 9 to be implemented in the Dutch legislation. We need to get paid to conduct professional public archaeology. And at the same time, we as archaeologists should contribute to social issues. In our opinion, public archaeology should focus on social issues like multicultural society, integration, conflicts, gender studies, climate change and sustainability. We have to admit that public archaeology is a distinct discipline and maybe it should not be carried out by archaeologists themselves. To conclude with what we started with, we believe that public archaeology is much more than to let the volunteers play archaeologists.